We're going to look at laying out a stringer or a set of concrete stairs. So let's say that I have a unit rise of seven inches. And I have a 10 inch unit run. So what I'm going to do is lay out a, what would be my stringer on here. Uh, when we're doing our concrete stairs, we have to do what we call an inverted stringer. And I'll show you what I mean by that once I've got this thing sort of laid out. So there's different ways to lay this out. But I'm going to start along this as a nice square edge here. And I'm going to start just back in, in from my edge here. Maybe that two inches right there, which will be the start. So my first rise, I'm going to go up my seven inches. There it is right there. And I'm going to come across 10 inches, uh, which is my run. So there's my 10 inch to my run right there. You know that I'm at my rise of seven inches. So there's the back of that. And I know from here up, since there's two rises, this is one rise. My second rise is going to go up to the 14 inch mark. So there's my 14 inch mark and drive it down there. So there's my one rise at seven inches. My second rise goes to 14 inches. So there's my one run. My second run is going to be also 14 inch, uh, 10 inches, sorry. So I've marked my 10 at the bottom here and I'm going to come across at that 10 and plumb up to 14. 14 there is the back of this tread. And I'll continue this line up to 21 because that's where my next rise is ending right there. That's where my next tread is at 21 and it'll be going back across that way. So I'm going to mark the back of that one too. So I'm going to go over 10 more inches, come over my 10 inches and I'm back up at my 21. There's the back edge of my tread. There's my 21 and I can join those across there. Okay, now this is a good thing for us to have. We're not, this drawing isn't done. I can take this away. Uh, and I would go on for the, the same number of treads and, and rises that I have. I can square off there, but the reason I didn't square off each of these like this is because if you, we call it a cumulative error. If I'm off this way by an eighth of an inch and this one by an eighth of an inch, I'm already out by a quarter before I even get to here. So as consistent as I can be is what I'm shooting for here. Now we need to add a nose to this thing and because it's concrete we can't just add a nose like we would on a, on a set of wooden stairs just out like this. So we need a one inch nose on this. So I'm going to come forward one inch and then down to nothing on each one of these. One inch to nothing. One inch to nothing. So it has to be straight square across. So I will mark this. comes across there to the, my one inch mark. Now I take my one inch down to nothing. That gives me that nose that I'm looking for. I'm gonna do the same here. Come square across or straight across to my one inch, one inch down to nothing. Same with my last one. Okay, so there's my one inch nosing, one rise, two rise, three rises. My fourth rise would go there and it would continue on in the same manner as that. So now I could design myself uh, what we call a pitch block. So this, this pattern here repeats itself over and over and over again. So what I'm gonna do just for our purposes, I'm gonna draw a line across here. Right, and that would carry on, this line would carry on through that point all the way up and up and up and up. Okay, if, you, if I took one of these and cut it out, 
from there to there and out here. This is what we call a pitch block. And if I knew what the slope of my stairs were, I could just put my, my block on there and trace it out and trace it out and trace it out. If I have this drawn on a snap down or drawn on a piece of uh, asponite or something, uh, this will give me a lot of information. So the depth, effective depth of our tread is measured from here or the throat is measured from here perpendicular across. So if our plan said, okay, it's got to be two inches, uh, it was probably going to be more likely it's going to say it's three and a half inches or more. So I could measure out three and a half inches like this, give myself that effective depth. And right here, this is all going to be concrete, concrete all in here. So when I support it, if this is a supported set of stairs, uh, I'm going to have rebar and uh, reinforcing mesh all in here and uh, my ties are gonna go. I'm gonna have a curb on the other side and this side. Uh, so there's gonna be some steel in here and this is all full of concrete. So I'm gonna need to, to draw this, or it helps me at least, to draw this so that I can make my, my stair horse underneath here to hold all this stuff up for my, my soffit underneath here. So underneath this, I'm gonna be putting, you know, my form ply uh, and then I got two by fours on edge uh, and, and so on so that I hold this thing up and we're gonna form it in such a way that we can strip all of this stuff off afterwards. It's not gonna be left inside there, but we want it so we can strip it out because maybe it's visible to underneath.